Hey creative people, you're watching Shiny Films and today we're jumping into HitFilm Express where I'm going to show you how to make this awesome animated wiggle text. Today's video tutorial will be rated 2 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It should be a beginner tutorial but you should have had at least some experience with HitFilm Express before. And before we begin, make sure to subscribe to my channel Shiny Films if you haven't already because I make tons of HitFilm Express tutorials like this as well as other video editing tutorials and you can follow me on Twitch as well. But let's just get straight on into this tutorial. So there are many different ways to create this wiggle text because all, after all, all you're doing is you're just kind of distorting this text to make it well wiggly. So I'm going to show you multiple different ways, tips and tricks. So if you want to learn all the different things about how to do this, um, I would recommend watching the whole video because I'll be going through multiple different ways of doing it. But first of all, we're going to go through this clean way, which creates this really clean look. Um, and so yeah, that should be pretty interesting. So to start off with, I'm just going to go straight into a composite shot by just clicking new composite shot in the media panel. You can rename it if you want, and you can set a custom duration and adjust all your settings. Just hit OK when you're done and you'll be in your new composite shot. In a composite shot, we can layer effects and layers much better and much more easily than we would be able to in the editor. So let's create a background. Just go new layer, plane, and then you can select any background that you want. Now it's time to create our text. So just go new layer, text, and you can set a custom text box size. Here mine is 1920, which is the width of my comp by 600 pixels tall. So just hit OK, then go into the text tool up here, then click inside your textbooks and start typing your text. As you can see, I've already got my fonts and everything pretty much sorted, but if not, you can just highlight your text, go into the text panel down here and adjust your fonts and all of that. All right, now that we've done that, I'm just gonna make one little adjustment so that we can center our text. Go into the selection tool and then in the controls panel up here, under transform, which is where we adjust movement, scale, position, all of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to drag the Y value, the up and down value of the anchor point down a little bit so that we have the text more in the center of the frame. Instead of adjusting the position to be down, when we adjust the anchor point to be down, that ensures that when we scale everything up and rotate, when we scale everything, sorry, and when we rotate it, it rotates around the center still rather than around some off position. Anyway, let's get on to our effect. So the first effect we're going to try out is called Waves. You can find it in the Effects panel under uh, the Distortion category. And if you just go and get Waves, it's a layer only, so you can only apply it in composite shots. But just drag it onto your text, and you'll be able to see that we have this wavy texture straight up just applied to our wiggle text. And normally if you want to have this kind of wiggle animation, this wave is probably the best way to do it. Another reason I love this effect is because it's actually super easy to animate this wave. You don't have to use keyframing or anything like that. Instead, there's just one property that we're going to adjust right now. But let's just open up our effect and see what all of these parameters do. Our amplitude is basically going to be the height of the wave. So if we just increase the amplitude, you'll notice that our wave becomes a lot higher. And our frequency, therefore, is going to be the length. The length of the start point of the wave to the end point. And if we increase the frequency, you can see that the wave goes up, down, up, down, up, down. But if we go very low frequency, it takes a long distance for the wave to complete. So we can just gonna uh, reset that to 10 actually to get a nice balanced wave. The angle is also pretty easy. It's basically just the angle of the wave, like so. And this will become more clear as we start to animate our wave. The displace angle is also just the angle of displacement, but you basically can just leave this on the angle. The center of the wave is where you can adjust basically the position of the wave, but it doesn't really matter because we don't want to have a specific wave, we just want to have it kind of animated. And speaking of animation, here's where we get to that, the phase speed. At the moment it's at zero, which means there's no speed, nothing's happening. But if we just set this, for example, for one, and we just play it back, you can see that our wave slowly travels left to right across the screen. And we can adjust the direction of travel again using our angle here. So for example, if we angle it up, then it travels up. Make sure you keep the rest of the settings the same, that way it'll just work the best for us. So you can basically leave it off like this, adjusting all these settings and moving your wave and adjusting the speed. 
But there's one thing which will really make our wiggling stand out. And that thing is going to be to make sure that the wave effect affects each letter individually rather than the whole wiggle text. That will make it much more wiggly, really, and it'll make it seem less like just one computer-generated wiggle wave across the whole thing. So to do this, I'm going to duplicate my layer six times, one for each of the letters. I'm just going to close up my layer, and then I'm just going to hit selecting the layer, of course, and then I'm just going to hit Control D on my keyboard, and that will duplicate it. Now we've got a second copy. I'm just going to do this another four times so that we have six copies, one for each letter in our wiggle. So we're going to go three, four, five, and six. Now we've got six copies. To make sure that each one of these is on one letter, we're going to mask out each of these individually. So just select your new text at the bottom, then go up to the rectangular mask tool up here. It might be helpful to disable the waves just so that we get a better idea of where everything looks. Just make sure you select your layer, then select the rectangular mask tool, and just draw a box over your W. Now you have the W isolated. The rectangular mask will make sure that only the W, or the area inside our rectangular mask, is visible, and everything else is invisible. So let's do the same for the next text layer. I'm just going to hide my mask here so that we're still looking at our unedited, no wave, layer, but I'm just going to now highlight the eye on the second text layer. Then on the third text layer, I'm going to do my G here, my fourth one, I'm going to do my fourth G here. On my fifth layer, I'm going to do my L, and of course my sixth layer, I'm going to do my E. Now we're going to recheck this mask at the bottom, and we're just going to show each of these layers one by one to see each of these layers appearing as we show them. I'm just going to close all these up really quick and show our waves. But at the moment everything looks the same because we've got the same wave effect applied to all of these. So I'm just going to go into one of these layers, for example the E here, open up the effects panel, open up the waves, and then adjust these parameters for this letter so that it's completely different. So for example I might make amplitude a little bit higher on the E here, or maybe a bit lower actually. And then I might adjust the angle a little bit. And then I might go ahead and change the center as well, so I can just move it over here and that way I'll get a bit of a different texture. And then I might adjust the speed as well. So you can do that for basically all of these letters and I'll be right back with you when you're done. So I finished animating every layer except the original one because we can leave that now since it's now different to the rest of them. And playing it back you can see that each of them animates and looks differently to the other ones. So we've got our own unique wiggle. That's already looking pretty good and you can leave it at that for sure. But now I'm just going to tell you about one more kind of distortion which you can use to wiggle your text. Either supplementary to this wave wiggle or to completely replace it. And to do that, we're going to be using Hate Distortion. If you look into the Distortion tab, you can see there are tons of different distortion types. Energy, Fluid, Heat, Smoke. You might want to mess around with all of these, but Heat is the only one which is available in the Express version. A bit of a plug, but if you want to start using these effects in add-ons or using the Pro version of HitFilm, then if you use the link in the description and you use the code SHINY10 at checkout, then you can get 10% off any purchases of HitFilm add-ons or HitFilm Pro. So if you want to buy HitFilm Pro and you want to upgrade, that is a great way to do it and you'll save some money as well. But today we're just going to be using the heat distortion since it's available in the Express version as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly create a new layer, a new gray layer. A gray layer is like an adjustment layer in Premiere. Basically it's a blank layer, but any effects you apply to it will affect all the layers below it. So it works well because we want to apply this to all of our text. Drag the heat distortion effect onto this gray layer. And you'll immediately notice that it's got this nice diffuse distortion texture. Just to show you what would happen without all of our previous wiggles on it, I'm just going to duplicate our bottom text layer, move it up the top, hide all of these text layers, and in this top text layer, 
I'm just going to uncheck our mask and uncheck our waves effect. That way we just have our standard wiggle text and this is just to show you what the heat distortion effect does. But if you show our gray layer again and we play it back, you'll notice it's this already animated heat distortion with the heat rising upwards and you've got this nice diffusion as well as the distortion. Just a note, if you apply this heat distortion directly to the text, it'll look very different. And that's why I've used this solid background plane. If we just apply the heat distortion to the text, then the distortion doesn't really work as well. If we just open it up and we set the diffusion strength to zero, so we get none of that hazy diffusion that we get from the heat distortion, and we just play it back, you'll notice it looks like it's cutting it out of the text and it looks super weird. So I would suggest that you figure out a way to properly use this heat distortion on your text. And if you're using a solid color background layer like I am, then all the better because it works really well. If I move it onto my grade layer, you can see how it now properly distorts it and it moves the text outside its text boundaries. Anyway, there's a ton of options here for customization. Scale and distortion affect the distortion map basically. So if you show scale and you lift it up, we get much larger areas of distortion and the whole text moves around. Whereas if we have a super small scale, we'll get loads of little ridges and tiny crevices like so. And the distortion is basically just the amount that it applies this map. So if you have a really big scale and a really big distortion, you'll get some crazy results. I'm just going to reset this for now. And we're going to have a look at our diffusion as well. If you're going for that motion graphic kind of look, you probably don't want to have any diffusion at all. And that'll give our edges a sharp look. But you can just add in distortion and you can add more distortion in more areas and you can just affect the strength of that distortion with these two parameters. Under the animation controls, you also have the wind direction. By default, it's up because heat distortion, you know, it would normally rise. But you can also adjust that angle and you can adjust the wind and noise speed as well. And you can adjust the seed of the noise to make a random effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely get rid of that distortion. I'm just going to hide the grade layer for now, delete our text here and show all of our wiggle text. And it does look pretty flat at the moment. So you can just add that extra little layer of wiggle by adding the heat distortion on top of it. In fact, you can even add multiple distortions. For example, I might have one super small scale distortion to add some tiny, tiny crevices into the corners of our text if I wanted, like so, nice and subtle. And then I could duplicate it and have one really big one, which moves all of the text as a whole. I could even have some diffusion here as well. So there you have it, a bunch of different ways for you to create this wiggled, distorted text in HitFilm. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit the like button. And again, you can check out my link in the description to get 10% off HitFilm if you use the code SHINY10 at checkout as well. I will see you all in the next video. Stay shiny.